Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Curious Kingdom. Today we are recapping French drama movie Some Like It Rare. The movie commences in a small town near Paris, where a married couple named Vincent and Sophie Pascal run a butcher shop, despite offering fresh and high-quality meat. Their business struggles to turn a profit and attract customers, unlike their competitors. Adding to their challenges, Vincent has a peculiar habit of awkwardly massaging the meatloaf before handing it over to customers. One day, a group of vegan protesters storms into their shop, causing chaos by spilling paint and damaging the interior. In their haste, they ruin the meat stored in the shop before fleeing. Vincent tries to stop them but gets attacked and cannot catch them. In the aftermath of this incident, Vincent is determined to identify one of the protesters by holding onto their mask. Meanwhile, Sophie visits her wealthy friend Stephanie's house and shares the troubling situation they faced. She becomes disappointed with Vincent's lack of effort in their relationship and the absence of gifts. Stephanie suggests that Sophie should consider leaving Vincent, as she deserves better treatment. During their conversation, Stephanie and her husband Mark boast about their wealth and success, further fueling Sophie and Vincent's jealousy. Mark belittles Vincent and reveals their plans to open another butcher shop in town. As a gift, Mark gives Vincent a shotgun, hinting at using it for protection against future attacks from the vegan protesters. On their way home, Sophie expresses her desire to divorce Vincent due to the lack of romance. However, Vincent ignores her words, only to be distracted by the sight of one of the vegan extremists who vandalized their shop. Driven by revenge, Vincent tries to hit the person with his car, but tragically ends up killing him accidentally. In a panic, Vincent reaches for his phone to call the police and confess, but Sophie intervenes, fearing the consequences of a lengthy prison sentence. Instead, she suggests a plan inspired by a serial killer named Michel Francois, who disposes of victims' remains in the city. Vincent reluctantly agrees to Sophie's idea and decides to butcher the dead body and place the remains in his shop. During the night, while performing the gruesome task, he accidentally drops an ear that his dog devours. The following morning, Vincent discovers that the chopped-up body is missing. To his surprise, a regular customer named Mrs. Kennard arrives at the shop, expressing her enjoyment of the meat Sophie sold her earlier. Unbeknownst to both Vincent and Mrs. Kennard, Sophie had mistakenly sold human meat, believing it to be pork. Caught off guard, Vincent tries to persuade Mrs. Kennard to purchase alternative cuts of meat but she insists on getting the same meat as before. Intrigued by Vincent's unusual behavior, Sophie demands to taste the meat herself. Unable to reveal the truth in front of the customer, Vincent reluctantly offers Sophie a piece of human flesh, to which she surprisingly takes a liking. Feeling impatient, Mrs. Kennard insists on buying more of the rare and delicious meat. Vincent sells her a significant portion and later reveals the truth to Sophie after she departs from the shop. To their surprise, Sophie develops a taste for human flesh and suggests selling it as a solution to dispose of the dead body. Vincent is initially shocked and wants to discard the meat, but they are interrupted by another customer who specifically asks for the same meat Mrs. Kennard had purchased. The meat quickly becomes popular in the neighborhood, attracting many customers. The couple begins making a substantial profit by selling it secretly from their home. Curiosity gets the better of Vincent, and he decides to taste the meat himself. Surprisingly, he also enjoys it. Sophie then tells him that vegans have pure blood, which makes their flesh taste good. She proposes hunting vegan extremists and selling their flesh for profit. While Vincent remains mostly silent, he contemplates the idea. The next day, their daughter Chloe brings her vegan boyfriend, Lucas, for lunch. Vincent and Sophie make great efforts to impress Lucas and prepare multiple dishes for him. However, their preparations are in vain as Lucas and Chloe refuse to eat, revealing that Chloe is vegan and strongly opposes consuming meat. Vincent and Sophie become angry and frustrated that their efforts are wasted due to veganism. Later that night, Vincent finally agrees to go along with Sophie's plan to hunt vegans. They target the owner of a vegan restaurant assuming he would be suitable for their purpose. However, at the last moment, Vincent looks into the owner's eyes and realizes he cannot kill another human, disheartened by their failed attempt. Sophie insists they need more practice. The couple devises a detailed plan they pretend to be vegans and protest outside a supermarket, hoping to find a suitable target. Eventually, a thin man approaches them and praises their efforts. He convinces them to meet later in a parking lot to discuss veganism and join their group. Vincent and Sophie arrive early at the meeting spot and practice different ways to kill their target. Unfortunately, the vegan arrives with his friends, forcing Sophie and Vincent to abandon their plan and hide the cleaver Vincent is holding. During the discussion, the vegans mention their plan to raid a new meat shop and invite Vincent and Sophie to join them. Initially hesitant due to the risk of exposure, Sophie agrees when she learns that the shop belongs to her friends Mark and Stephanie. 
On the way to the meat shop, the vegans inquire about Vincent and Sophie's occupations. To maintain their cover, they make up stories, pretending to be florists. Upon arriving at the shop, Sophie starts having doubts as it belongs to her dear friend. However, fueled by jealousy and Mark's condescending remarks, Vincent enters the shop and causes chaos by destroying freezers and partitions. In the next scene, the couple goes to a restaurant for dinner. They discuss secretive ways to hunt their victims but end up in a heated argument. Vincent storms off angrily, leaving Sophie alone. Taking advantage of the situation, a waiter flirts with her. Sophie realizes they share similar interests and agrees to go for a ride with him. Outside Sophie's home, a romantic atmosphere builds and they start kissing. However, Sophie discovers that the waiter is a vegan and purposely bites his tongue, making it bleed. She then invites him inside to tend to his wound, and the waiter willingly agrees. While the waiter is still in the bathroom, Sophie approaches Vincent and informs him about the situation. Vincent grows nervous and has second thoughts about killing the waiter. Sophie, however, tells him that the waiter was a good kisser. This angers Vincent, and he starts sharpening his knife, suggesting that the meat needs to be distressed to be like Japanese beef. Moments later, fear overcomes him once again, and he pleads with Sophie to let the plan go. Sophie relents, and as Vincent goes to talk to the waiter, the man, who is now naked, taunts him and asks how Vincent would like to see his vegan meat on Sophie. This pushes Vincent to his breaking point, and he violently beats the waiter to death. The following day, Sophie receives a call from her friend Stephanie, who informs her about the vandalism that occurred the previous night. Concerned, the couple rushes to the scene, disguising their true intentions. To their surprise, they find Mark arguing with the police officer, who happens to be the same officer investigating the vandalism at Vincent's butcher shop. Later on, the officer, filled with fear, requests a private conversation with Vincent. However, Vincent soon realizes that the officer has visited their shop before and expresses interest in purchasing more of their infamous Iranian pork. Eager to capitalize on this opportunity, Vincent agrees, and they resume selling human meat. The demand for their products skyrockets, with customers lining up and causing their stock to sell out within an hour. Encouraged by their success, they decide to make vegan hunting a regular activity. Armed with deadly weapons and employing sophisticated techniques, they embark on a daily spree of killings throughout the week. They increase the price of their meat and collect substantial profits. During a lunch outing with their friends, Stephanie and Mark, the couple brings along counterfeit Iranian pork. Like previous customers, Stephanie and Mark are instantly enamored with its taste. However, Mark unexpectedly bites down on something hard and metallic while chewing the meat. Stephanie, with her nursing background, recognizes it as a pacemaker used to regulate a human heart. Shockingly, it turns out that one of Vincent's victims had a pacemaker implanted in their heart. Vincent manages to defuse the situation, but it escalates into a heated argument between the couple, resulting in a physical fight. Vincent aggressively bites off a piece of Mark's ear, leaving the other couple in horrified disbelief. Undeterred by the altercation and Stephanie's doubts, Sophie and Vincent continue their gruesome killing spree, raking in substantial profits. Surprisingly, as the money comes in and their lives appear to improve, their failing marriage seems to improve as well. In the next scene, they attend a vegan festival where Vincent's attention is drawn to a chubby young boy. His cannibalistic instincts take over, and he starts planning ways to butcher the boy for meat. However, a sudden realization strikes Vincent, he has become a psychopath. Disgusted with himself, he decides to leave and coincidentally runs into their daughter, Chloe, and her vegan boyfriend, Lucas, at the festival, acting surprised by their presence. Lucas, suspicious of the recent disappearances of several vegans, accuses the couple of being involved. Vincent tries to deny it, but Lucas becomes angry and forces them to leave the festival. Unfortunately, one of the vegans who accompanied the couple to Mark's meat shop overhears the argument, shocking him to discover their true identity as butchers. Outside the festival grounds, Sophie spots a woman and urges Vincent to kill her. Vincent's bloodlust returns due to the earlier confrontation with Lucas, and he succumbs to his desire to kill. They proceed with a gruesome act before heading home. Later that night, as Vincent is in the midst of butchering a woman, there's a knock on the door. To his shock, it's a police officer. Vincent opens the door cautiously and they engage in conversation. The officer praises the quality of their Iranian pork meat and expresses a desire to watch Vincent in action. However, Vincent changes the topic and asks the officer why he is out late at night. The officer reveals that he is guarding the area as ten vegans have gone missing. Vincent's dog appears, with human hand in his mouth. Vincent manages to scare the dog away with a shout, saving himself from suspicion. Though the officer leaves, Vincent still feels that he might be suspicious. He tells Sophie about his worries, but she reassures him that they won't get caught because they have disposed of all the bodies and erased any evidence. Following this, Vincent cleverly gets rid of the meat from their recent victims by selling it or putting it in garbage bags around the city. 
They feel compelled to do this because people are becoming more aware and strict. Search programs are in place for the missing individuals. Late at night, the doorbell rings, and Lucas, their daughter's boyfriend, shows up. He apologizes for his behavior at the vegan festival and expresses his stress over his missing vegan friends. Sophie, always sly, comforts him while secretly suggesting to Vincent that they make Lucas their next victim. However, Vincent refuses and politely walks Lucas to the door, urging him never to come back. The next day, without discussing it with Sophie, Vincent surprises their customers by saying that they are out of stock and won't be selling Iranian pork. This disappoints their customers and leads to an argument between Vincent and Sophie. Frustrated, Vincent storms out of the shop with his dog. Meanwhile, the vegan group that had wrecked Mark's meat shop arrives at Vincent's place to seek revenge for their betrayal. Sophie tries to send them away, but they overpower her. They tie her up and viciously beat her. When Vincent returns from his walk and sees the vegan's van outside, he senses that something is wrong. He quickly enters the shop with a cleaver and finds the vegan's about to kill his wife. Fueled by anger, Vincent jumps in and, with the help of his loyal dog, kills two of the attackers. One of the vegans manages to injure Vincent in the shoulder by impaling him with a rod. But Sophie frees herself just in time to eliminate the last attacker. The movie ends when Justice catches up to Vincent and Sophie as they are arrested and found guilty of multiple murders. Mark and Stephanie, their friends, are revealed to be the ones who reported Vincent's suspicious behavior, leading to their capture. As a result, Sophie and Vincent are sentenced to death. Some like it rare in a dark and twisted way explores themes of depravity, deception, and the deterioration of morality, offering a chilling glimpse into the descent of a couple into darkness and the consequences they face. On that note, we bid adieu. Like, share and subscribe for more such content. Curious Knight signing off. Stay safe stay curious.